In this video, you're going to continue adding styling to your website using SaaS nesting. But before doing that, let's get introduced to another syntax that you can use in SaaS. The extension we used for our style file is scss. There is another extension you can use, which is called SAS. The difference between the two syntaxes is that in this one, you don't have to use curly braces and semicolons. So if I delete all of those, and then go to my command and convert the style.sas file instead of the style.scss file to my css file and run the command again. So if you want to stop this, you just do control C like this. So on a Mac it's control C and on Windows it should be Control C as well. So I'm going to run the command again. And you can see that we've got the same output inside the CSS file. So it's up to you whether you want to choose that syntax or that one. I actually prefer this one because it looks very similar to CSS using curly braces and semicolons. But if you want, you can go for that one if it suits you better. All right, for now, I'm going to go back to the scss file. So I'm going to change the command again. And then run the command again. So at the moment, we are watching that file and applying any changes in the compilation to CSS. So I'm going to close that that and stay with this one. Just a quick comment before we continue. If you want to convert a whole folder of SAS files or watch files inside that folder and convert them to CSS files inside another folder, all you need to do inside your command is to have your first argument as the folder itself and your second argument as the folder of CSS files as well. So if I do this, then I'm going to be watching all files inside the SAS folder and converting them to CSS files inside the CSS folder. All right. So that was just something to bear in mind, just in case you want to convert everything inside a folder to CSS files. All right. So now let's go ahead and add more styling inside our SAS file. So now I'm going to add the hover state and the active state for these links. So you can see that if I click on the link and it becomes active, there is a certain styling for the link. And if I just hover in it, there is a different styling. All right. So inside the selector of our links, we can add the hover state by going to the link like this colon hover now since the selector is a before the curly brace it's not going to be convenient to use a again right there so what you can do is use an ampersand which means that you are referring to the same selector outside the curly braces. So this ampersand means A. All right. So when I hover on a link, I want the background color to change. So let's change it for now to yellow, for example, and see what we get. As, as you can see, it is working. Now let's go to the active state. 
So again, I'm using the ampersand and let's go for another color. So you can see that both of them are actually yellow, but one is darker than the other. So let's go for another color for now and then come back to it later. So I'm going to use that one for now. So when I click on it, it becomes green, as you can see. And I'm going to come back to these later on, and I'm going to use something in SAS called functions to darken the yellow color we used originally. And you'll see how that works in a bit. Okay. All right, now let's move to the concept of variables in SAS. A variable can be used to store any CSS value. So all these values that you used so far for your styling, you can store them inside a variable. So that could be the value of your padding, the background color that you used for your nav, the value of your text transform, and so on. All right. So for now, let's create a few variables. So I'm going to create a primary variable or let's go for primary color, for example. And I'm going to set that to the one we use for the nav background color, like this. So the syntax is as following. I used a dollar sign just before the name of the variable, which you can choose. So you can put any name there. And then colon, then the value of the color that I want. So now I've got a variable where I stored a value. Now you can use that variable in your styling. So instead of writing the variable again, I can just use the name of the variable. So it's very hard to remember a color like that. So it's more convenient to store it inside a variable and use the variable wherever you want inside your styling. So in our example here, the website is pretty small and simple. So the value of our variable is not repeated many times in our style sheets. But once you move to a big project, then you will see the point of using variables like this. All right. All right. Now let's style the rest of our document. So just one thing. I'm going to change the name of the color to color one. Like this. Okay, so now we're going to style the content of the article elements. So we've got the article, then inside it we've got a couple of divs and then h3s and paragraphs. So again, we're going to be using nesting. So let's go to the article, then div, and then Let's go to the H3 element and give it a color. So I'm going to go for something like, let's save and let's go to the paragraph and give it also a color and save. All right, perfect. Let's change the font size of the H3 to make it slightly bigger. So let's go for 24 pixels or 28. And let's go for a font size of 20 for the paragraph. That looks all right. Now to make our code more structured, we're going to define all the colors right there and then use them in our styling later on. So for this color, I'm going to place it inside a variable color two like this and then use the name of the variable there. And then I'm going to do something similar with that one. I'm going to call the variable color, color three. All 
Let's make sure that everything is still working. It is. All right. Now you can see that this link is active. And if we look at the index.html file, you can see that it's got a class active. So let's add some styling to that link. So we're going to go back to the nav, to the link, and then we're going to have another selector. So you're selecting the link of class active, which is different than that. So when you select the link of class active, you do something like this, a dot active. Since we are inside the link selector, we're going to use an ampersand. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to change the color to this value. All right. And also let's change the font weight to bold. That looks perfect. Well, let's increase the font size as well. So let's go for 24 pixels, for example. That looks all right. Now, since we are using Flexbox, it's a good idea to set the box sizing property of everything to border box to make sure the dimensions of elements include things like padding. Okay, now a quick comment about variables. Since we define th those variables at the top of our file like that, then they're going to be accessible anywhere inside our file. But what if you define the variable 3 right there? And then you try to use it right there. Is it going to work? Well, let's find out. So I'm going to save. So let's check the color of the paragraph. Or to see it clearly, let's change the value to red, for example, and see. Well, actually, it doesn't work. So basically what's happening here is that we're defining a color between curly braces and we're using that variable in another context inside another set of curly braces. Well, it doesn't work because any variables that you define inside those curly braces are going to be specific to the content inside those curly braces. So what you can do to fix this is to make that variable global. So you can do that by adding the global keyword after the exclamation mark like this. So if I do that, then that variable is going to be accessible from there as well. All right, so that was just a quick comment to see the context of different variables. So let's go back to our previous value. All right, hopefully you're now comfortable with the concepts of nesting and the use of variables in SAS. In the next video, you're going to learn how to reuse certain chunks of the SAS language inside the same file and across files using some really amazing features like mixins, extends, and you will also get introduced to pre-built SAS functions which will make your styling writing a lot easier.